And I'm Billy. And we're Fuji Guys. This is a great video where we're going to go through the top features of our brand new XM1, the interchangeable lens camera, the affordable interchangeable lens camera in the X series. Uh, of course, we sell it as a kit uh, with the 16 to 50 lens, but it takes all X mount lenses, so That's you can right. use any of our XF lenses. In this video, particularly, we're going to go through some of the key features on this camera, how to set them up, how to use them, what the benefit is of those. Take it away, Billy. One of the newest features, of course, with the X-M1 is that, you know, uh, it has a tilt LCD screen. It's a 920K uh, high resolution, 3, 3 to 2 ratio screen, so you see a lot more of the images. Some of the other cameras that have tilt screen have a 16 by 9 frame, but because the sensor is actually a 3 to 2 ratio, it's going to be uh, a smaller image, so you can see black lines or bars on the left and right. So having this 3 to 2 ratio screen is nice because you get a bigger view of what you're trying to frame. Uh, the tilting is kind of nice. It, it tilts upwards up to about 90 degrees or even a little bit more than 90 degrees. And it actually can tilt downwards uh, again about 90 degrees so that it, you can, it allows you to take pictures over and above you. And as you can see, the viewing angle on the LCD screen is quite nice. It has that clear view filter on it. And it uh, doesn't matter which angle you, you can actually see. Uh, the screen, which is kind of nice, high contrast, 920K screen. Uh, the flip out screen is useful for when shooting down low. If you may want to take macro shots, even doing videos, because you can keep it close to your body and it's a lot more steadier than having a fixed uh, LCD screen where you hold it in front of you, right? So that's kind of nice to have. Uh, on the screen, of course, you have different displays, but pushing the display back button, you can toggle from information one which shows you this sort of graphical display. If I were to set it to manual mode here, for instance, you have this graphical display on the aperture. As you can see, it rotates left and right, and the shutter speeds also rotate left and right, as you can see from there. If I go to the next information display, it has more the standard display of apertures here, so it's less graphical, but it's faster. And if you prefer just instant numbers, as you can see, you don't have, it just adjusts, nothing rotates on, on top. You go back to the information off, which is uh, again through the display back button. Now you have the full screen without any interruption. Of course, once you push button halfway down, the, the images come up again to tell you what settings the camera is shooting. So that's kind of nice to did see. You also have a customized mode, uh, which you can customize grid lines, um, what you want to display from flash, battery power, histogram display. Anything is fully customizable here, so you can turn things on and off. Going to the menu, of course, uh, and going into the uh, display custom settings, this is where you can turn off all those, uh, those options there. So if you wanted to turn off histogram display, um, again, it's off now, as you can see, through the custom display mode. The XM1 has a built-in Wi-Fi feature that allows you to connect to a smartphone, whether it's iOS or Android, or through a home computer's network so that you can download images to the computer directly. Uh, let me show you how this Wi-Fi function works. It's built into the camera. And uh, let's take a look at an image where, let's say I want to transfer that onto my smartphone. Uh, what you would do is open up and download first the Fuji application. There's two options, the camera application and the photo receiver. The photo receiver is a basic program that just receives images from the camera. The camera application does a little bit more things. It gives you the options to receive images, to browse images from the camera on your smartphone. So I can actually use my smartphone to choose the images and then choose to download. I can also send geotagging information from my, cam uh, from my phone onto the camera so I can take photos and geotag images that way. So even though there's no GPS, I can use the Wi-Fi functionality as well as the location service on my phone to create sort of a geotagging feature on this camera. So all I want to do right now is to show you the basic simple connection and transferring of images uh, from the camera onto my smartphone. So I'm going to have it on playback. I'm going to push the function button on the top, which is my dedicated Wi-Fi button. I'm going to select send individual images. I can also select multiple images, but I'm just going to do this one sample here. And then I'm going to push receive on my camera and, and then of course connect. So it's telling me now I need to go to my Wi-Fi settings to ensure that I'm connected to this camera. So I go then to my settings on my uh, smartphone. I choose the camera's connection which is Fuji from XM1 009 but I can also change that if I wanted to. It's now connected. I go back to my camera application um, and I'm just going to cancel that. I'm going to try it again. 
and connect to see if it connects. So it does see it now. Now I want to push OK to transmit that image onto my uh, phone. And as you can see, it's now on my phone. So I'm going to end that. I'm going to disconnect it. And uh, now I can actually look at my images. Uh, it's in my camera roll, as you can see. It's one of the images that I've actually captured, as you can see, which I can now share to things like Facebook and Twitter if I wanted to do that. Okay, so that's just a quick look at connections. If I connect this to my home network at, at home, um, you know, I can actually have it save images to my computer automatically. I go into the menu, again, PC Auto Save Settings. I can do a manual setting to go through, you know, the network option or enter my SSID. Or I can do a simple setup. If, if your router supports the, uh, the, uh, the, the WPS protected connection mode, that's the easiest mode to connect this camera to your home network from, from which you then can auto save your images to your computer. There's a great high speed mode on this camera if you want to capture fast action shots. I mean, you can technically pre focus, take your shot, not even pre focus and push down. It's somewhat pretty fast. Let me see how fast it goes here, just by pushing it. But if you're doing fast action shots and you really want to take the guesswork out of this, you can actually push this directional pad down, which is your quick access to your high speed shooting mode. You got an option of shooting 5.6 frames or 3 frames a second. At 5.6 frames, as you can see here, it fires a bunch of shots, and then when it hits the buffer, it should slow down a little bit. But it does have a pretty fast buffer, so it's kind of nice that, you know, if you're doing these things, especially shooting with RAW, you want to have a very fast cut. And that's just a five frames a second shooting. You can stop, go fire a bunch of more shots. Stop, fire a bunch of more shots. As you can see, that's kind of nice. And of course, it's right into your cut, and depending on your cut speed, it may take longer or not. You push the playback button. Now, the high speed modes, as you can see here, as you can see, they all show up on the screen. Some of the other cams we had, the, the, the high-speed shooting modes were all grouped together. Uh, they made it a little more simple now. They just went back to the, the old style of showing all your images on there. So you'd have to navigate. If you took a bunch of shots, you would navigate through all those shots just to get to the original shot that you took uh, earlier in the, uh, the picture, as you can see here. Okay, and that's kind of cool to see. Uh, and then, of course, if you choose the... Uh, three frames a second, not as fast, but you have a longer buffer if you wanted to go that route. So again, that's just a quick look at the high speed mode on this camera. The newest feature on the XM1, of course, is this brand new uh, super intelligent flash system. Uh, this is super intelligent flash system was incorporated in cameras that uses of an electronic leaf shutter. Uh, because this is a focal plane shutter, it's a lot more difficult. So the XE1 X Pro 1 doesn't have this system. If you ever use an X100 or 100S or any of the cameras that use super intelligent flash, the one of the biggest feature or benefit of this flash system is that it doesn't wash out your subjects. And it's not just for taking close-up shots. So let's imagine I take a close-up shot here of this uh, scene. And uh, I'm just going to, for example here, set the flash. Uh, I'm just going to put it in the P mode, and I'm going to set the flash uh, to the, so that it's forced. And uh, of course, it's forced here. Okay. The flash goes off, and I look back at the image. You know, it's nice and even. If I, I zoom in on, you can see the image is not washed out whatsoever. And some of the other flash systems, when you do close up shots, the flash just overexposes the scene and becomes washed out. Uh, and that's the benefits of super intelligent flash. But of course, you can always shoot it in any situation. So the subject's further away, the flash is going to adjust appropriately and, and make the flash even more powerful so that it can reach the subject. And again, again, giving you proper and even exposure. And what it does, it does a pre-flash to determine what the lighting situation is, of course, based on your settings on your camera. It also then does a secondary flash and then a trailing flash which then that's the secret in this super intelligent flash system that allows it to give you that optimal flash output for any situation. So whether you're doing macro shots, whether you're doing portraits, uh, subjects that are very close to you, uh, this flash is going to come quite handy and it's not going to wash out your subjects because of this super intelligent flash system. The XM1 incorporates uh, face detection now uh, on this camera and it uses it uh, in the SR Plus Auto mode, which is a scene recognition plus. 
Uh, in that mode, it actually detects focusing automatically, so the focus constantly adjusts, and it determines if it needs to set it to, say, a macro functionality, uh, which would then switch it, it will switch it to. Uh, if it needs to find that, as you can see right there, it also will find if it's a portrait. So again, if it's, it finds faces using face detection, it's going to automatically determine that it's a, a portrait shot, and you need to, uh, and it's going to adjust the uh, the camera accordingly. As you can see right there, you take the snapshot. It also determines if there's lighting in the background, if the subject's actually moving. Uh, it's going to think it's motion with the uh, portrait. And there's even backlighting. So it's a very smart, intelligent scene mode uh, that basically does everything for you. And basically, you can just point and shoot. A perfect setting for when you want to give this camera to somebody and, and to have them take a photo of you. Maybe they don't understand how to focus properly. And, you know, I, I always hate images being out of focus because it's focused in the background. Having this SR Auto Mode makes it uh, a very simple to use feature. And again, it detects portrait, landscape, even night scenes, as well as, you know, uh, different situations in the beach uh, if you're shooting in front of uh, uh, things, scenes like that. So that's just the SR Plus Auto, and it's done through the dial of this camera. Let's take a look at the uh, different scene modes on this camera. Of course, the camera uses face detection now, so it opens up an avenue for things like the Scene Recognition Auto Plus, which determines portrait, landscape, and whatnot. But there's also other scene modes built in, actually, on the dial. You've got a portrait setting, which gives you better skin tone, color reproduction. you got landscape mode, which changes the uh, depth of field so that everything becomes focused. You might have more vivid colors. You've got a sports mode that prefers faster shutter speeds as it can uh, so that you can freeze moving subjects. And then if you put it to the SP dial, which is the scene position dial, you can then push the menu OK button, go into scene position, and select from the different other scene modes that are available. There's a portrait enhancer that gives you a smoother skin, so it does edit the image a little bit. You've got a night mode, a night tripod mode, fireworks. You've got, again, a lot of these preset modes that will uh, prefigure pre-configure the camera's exposure to give you the optimal settings. Saying that, of course, you can always shoot with the SR Plus, and it's going to give you, uh, most of the time, the best uh, shooting uh, you know, settings uh, for that particular scene. Although the XM1 is designed to be a simple point-and-shoot camera, it does have full control both over aperture and shutter speeds. Now, with this kit camera, with the lens itself, the 16-50 to lens, or any lens that doesn't have an aperture ring, um, let me show you how you can control both the aperture and shutter speeds uh, on this camera. Of course, if your lens has an aperture ring, then you could use it uh, right off of the lens itself. So let me just give you this demonstration. In the P mode, that's basically program automatic. It's just a point and shoot. There's no control over shutter speeds or apertures. Uh, but you can go into the Q menu, and you can it opens up some options that was not highlighted when you have it in the Auto mode or the SR Plus Auto mode. Okay, in the S mode, which is shutter priority, you basically use the uh, command dial here to adjust the shutter speeds, and the camera will adjust the appropriate uh, uh, aperture to get you the proper exposure of that scene, as you can see there. So if you prefer to, to free subjects uh, in motion, you can. Use the faster shutter speeds, and the camera will use the appropriate aperture to get you, again, the right uh, exposure. Now, if you set it to the aperture priority mode, which is the A, this allows you to control the depth of field on the camera, or the aperture on the camera. And as you rotate it, you can move in one-third stops all the way up from, uh, you know, up to f22, which is the maximum on this lens. Uh, and the fastest aperture on this camera is a 3.5. But because it's variable, if I set it to a 3.5 aperture, um, as you can see right here, as I zoom in with the lens, see the, the aperture actually keeps adjusting 4.245 up to 5.6. And that's what it means by saying 3.5 to 5.6. So at the wide end, the aperture, the fastest is 3.5. At the full telephoto end, the fastest aperture is 5.6. But of course, you can always adjust that to be even more increase the depth of field by increasing the aperture at that point anyways. And that's how you control the aperture priority. Now in the full manual mode on this camera, uh, you, you now use the command dial on the top to adjust the shutter speeds. And again, you have this little uh, nice uh, graphical user interface that shows that the shutter speed is being adjusted. And for the aperture, you use the sub command dial on the bottom here, as you can see. 
to fully adjust both aperture and shutter speeds. You also notice this little guiding, uh, I guess, graph on the left-hand side. That used to be your exposure compensation. It also shows you if your image is now underexposed or overexposed. So as I adjust the shutter speeds, you'll see as it goes faster and faster, uh, you'll notice that uh, the image becomes underexposed. If I take a snapshot, I'm going to get pretty much a uh, very underexposed image. If I change the shutter speeds uh, to be slower, as you can see here, now I'm overpassed, uh, overexposed. If I take that snapshot, uh, my image should be technically washed out. As you can see, it is washed out there. So you can actually use that guide to set your shutter speeds and aperture so that you know when it hits the zero, you know you have an even, even exposure. And if I take that shot, as you can see, uh, it comes out exactly how I see it. So that's how you're going to use the, the PSAM mode or the manual modes on this camera. Now, if your camera, like I said, has an aperture lens on it, um, then you can change the aperture by using that. If you don't want to use it and you want to use the menu, you set the aperture on the, on the lens itself to A, again, on the, cam, on the lenses that have the aperture ring, and then you can actually use this to control aperture as well. So that's one way of using it uh, via the menu. One of the newest features for the X-Series camera, especially for the XM1, is that it now has a dedicated video recording button. This camera offers full HD video with stereo sound at 30 frames a second. It also has, of course, a built-in uh, speaker here so you can play back your videos. But simply, all you have to do is push the record button and it starts recording video. And uh, of course, uh, you want to have yourself at least a class 6 rated card or faster, otherwise, you know, there's too much information for the camera to process. And if we're using a slow memory card, it's actually going to stop it from recording the full length. And here with full HD, you get about 15 minutes of non-stop recording. Of course, you can take multiple clips as you, as you go through it if you wanted to. For real video, of course, you don't want to obviously record so long of clips, okay? Now, you can zoom during the video. It has continuous autofocus. Uh, there's a new autofocus system on the video that actually uh, focuses quite nicely uh, for the system. But if you're like me and you want to have full control, um, again, I'm going to stop the video by pushing the record button. You can, you can go into the menu and configure that yourself. So let's, uh, let's take a look at that quickly. If you scroll down by pushing the menu OK button and then using the directional pad font going down to the video setup, as you can see here, you can choose from the video mode so you can shoot Full HD or 1080p. I'm going to leave it at Full HD. You can also change the, the focusing mode. So you have three different options. Center focus. What that does is that when you push the shutter button, um, or actually when you push the, the, the record button or the shutter button, it locks the focus in for the very first time. And as it records, if you zoom in, zoom out, the focusing doesn't adjust. The continuous autofocus is what I had it at, and it constantly adjusts for the scene. Uh, the last option, of course, is manual focus, which I actually prefer. And by setting it to manual focus, um, you can start recording uh, like this. And using the uh, manual focus ring on the lens, you can make the image come in and out of focus. So let me just zoom in on it so that you can see it a little bit easier. So it's in focus. It's out of focus. And you can see this line here that tells you sort of uh, where your focus distance is. As you can see, I move from. Um, out of focus to in, in focus, as you can see right there. I prefer to have it in manual focus, and the great thing about this new feature is that you can have the camera set to auto focus, but you can still have the manual focus enabled on the video so that you can take auto focus pictures, but when you do the videos, it will be set to the manual focus because it remembers that setting, which I really like because I, I prefer it to adjust the focusing myself. You can still zoom if you have a zoom lens on the camera, and the, of course the image stabilization will, will be operational if the lens itself supports image stabilization. So that's just the HD video. So let's take a look at the video itself. You push the playback button, and any video clips will have a little string like that. You push it down to play the video. And you got the built-in speakers. You can stop the video. You can fast forward in the video by frame, as you can see right there. You can also use this on top to fast forward the frames, as you can see. You can continue playing the video. You can stop the video. And of course, you can obviously delete the video as well as you wanted to. OK, so that's just a quick look at the 4HD uh, feature or the video feature on the XM1. I really like it. Uh, it's very simple to use, and I like the fact that you have a dedicated video button. And because it's recessed, 
It's not as easily pushed by accident if you're holding the camera, which is also nice, but it's also simple enough to actually push it with your finger if you intentionally wanted to do that. So again, uh, that's great to have. Now the camera has a tilt LCD, and using that with the video also is kind of nice to do because you can keep the camera more close to your body to give you a steadier hold. The XM1 has a great feature called advanced filters that gives you some cool effects on the camera. I know you can do this on, on a computer afterwards, but sometimes it's simpler just to take the photo straight from the camera itself. So you would set the dial to the advanced dial here, and then from there you can push the menu OK button, which brings you to the advanced filter options. I'm going to select that, and I can either use my directional pad or I can use my command dials to uh, rotate and select the different options. I got this toy camera effect that gives me a little bit of a vignetting effect to the image itself, as you can see right here. Um, you, know, you have, uh, if I go back into the menu, whoops, I can select other filter effects as well. I can use things like the um, uh, miniaturize effect that blows the top and bottom, gives you sort of a diorama effect. You got uh, pop color, which you know emphasizes contrast and adds up, uh, um, you know, um, um, color. And of course, you got a high key mode, which kind of oversaturates and over brightens the, the the image. You got low key. You got dynamic tone. Soft focus, which gives you that effect of you know when you want to do wedding shots and you see that dreamy look to the shot. That's kind of nice to uh, to do there, as you can see. Uh, if I put that image up, as you can see, that it has that little glow effect to the image itself. It's like sort of putting sort of a, a Vaseline type of thing in front of the lens, uh, sort of an old school style there. And of course, one of my favorites, of course, is the ability to 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 uh, actually select different colors and have it sort of monochrome. So this is sort of the uh, the partial color feature. You got this in red, in oranges, in yellow, in green blue as well as purple as you can see there. If I set it to the blue, uh, that card shows up in blue. Everything else is kind of in a monochrome uh, uh, setting here. So I'll take a shot of that as you can see. I can also go in the menu and select uh, maybe a different color like uh, yellow and only the yellow appears uh, on this as well. So again, I take a snapshot and you can see it. And the great thing about this advanced filter is that you see it live. You see it on the screen so you know exactly what you're shooting before you actually capture the shot. And if I zoom in on the shot as you can see, only the yellow appears, everything else uh, is a monochrome color. The Q menu on this camera gives you quick access to some of the most commonly used controls. You can push the Q menu and it brings up this screen where you can use the directional pad to go through it. Like any of the X-Series cameras that have the Q menu, you'll be, you'll be uh, pretty much, uh, it's very similar. They did move a few things around, including the uh, focus mode points because this camera doesn't have a selective for autofocus. This is where you would actually change it from here. You can use the command to change it from the center focus, uh, continuous auto focus, manual focus, uh, area focus, as you can see right there. Okay, you can change ISOs, you can change dynamic range, even the ability to shoot, uh, you know, raw with JPEGs or just uh, a raw itself is up to you. Uh, how you want to set it. Fine means uh, very little compression for the JPEG and normal means a little bit more compression, smaller file, but maybe a little bit more compression seen on the image itself. And there's other th settings like the self timer, the image stabilization. So if you, ha if you attach an image stabilized lens, you can go in here and turn off the image stabilization or change it to the different uh, preferences uh, uh, that you want there. You got the flash mode options. It shows up when you pop the flash. So you can change it from slow synchro, rear, a commander mode which doesn't do a pre-flash, and of course you got the auto flash uh, settings there, and, on, and your brightness of the screen. So that's just a quick look at the Q menu. There's also a function menu, you push it, and it gives you quick access to uh, different settings including ISO, I have a default to ISO, but if you want to customize that, you can hold the function button for a few seconds down, and it brings up a screen and you can select which function you want to choose. Maybe you want to have the face detection turn on and off at will. You can do that by pushing that button. It gives you quick access to the face detection on and face detection off, as you can see. Um, or you can configure it to uh, things like instant focus. If you wanted to do manual focusing and use that to uh, do your, your instant one-touch focus, there's uh, different options, again, you can choose from, including self-timer, ISO, image quality, dynamic range. So that's just a quick look at the Q and the function menu uh, on the uh, camera.
If you want this camera to be super silent in the sense that, you know, maybe you're taking pictures in the museum, uh, what you can actually do is put it into the silent mode by holding the display back button for a few seconds. And it says that it's going to disable the flash, sound, the self timer, and, and any other thing that makes noise. So if you take a photo, whoops, I got it in, a, I guess, a bracketing mode, put it back to single shot. All you're going to hear from the camera is the actual focal plane shutter going off. That's a mechanical sound. If I do the flash, the flash is actually not going to fire because it's in that silent mode. Holding back the display back button for a few seconds will put you out of the silent mode, which then now the flash should actually work uh, if, I, if the camera, of course, needs the flash. Okay. Uh, there's also another mode. If you, uh, if you want to lock these controls, so let's say you want to take photos and you accidentally push all these buttons here you, and you don't want that to happen, like macro, uh, what you can do is hold the manual OK button for a few seconds and it brings up a little lock. And now these buttons don't work, so you don't accidentally push these buttons. But if I push the menu OK, I can still use it to navigate to the different settings. If I push the ISO, uh, the buttons up top, as you can see, I can actually... Uh, use it to uh, control different settings, uh, like I said, um, as you can see there. So it locks the, uh, the, the controls, okay? And unlocking it, you hold the, the menu OK button for a few seconds, and it's back out. The last thing is the Q button. If you hold the Q button for a few seconds, it brings up the brightness of the LCD screen. So in bright sunny days where it's hard to see, that's a quick little tip. Uh, that brightens up the screen instantly. Again, holding down the Q button will disable that brightness uh, feature on the LCD. A nice creative feature on the XM1 is the multi-exposure mode that actually allows you to take two shots and superimpose them as a single shot. Makes it easier, you don't have to edit it on the computer and gives you some really cool effects. So let me show you that. You have to put it to the advanced dial. From the advanced dial, you then push the menu OK button and then select the multiple exposure, you push OK. Uh, for this sample, I'm just going to use the manual focusing uh, because uh, it, it works quite well, but you can also use autofocus. I'm going to zoom in on this shot. I'm going to kind of blur this out because I want this to be kind of my, my background shot. And I'm going to take the photo and it's going to say, OK, should I take the next shot, which I'm happy with? If I don't like it, I can push retry. So I'm going to push OK. And now you can see there's an overlay of that original shot. Now here's my new scene that I'm going to shoot. I'm going to have the subject in this. Maybe put them in the rule of thirds here on this side. I want to adjust my focus manually so that he appears in focus. Maybe come a little closer here. And I'm going to take my second shot now. And now it's going to merge that shot to give you together by pushing OK. And if I look at it, I have these two superimposed images. I'm going to turn off the display, you can see. It's quite nice. It gives you that cool effect. I like it when you shoot lights because you, when, when you're shooting bright lights, you can actually create those big out-of-focus lights uh, and then shoot on the subject, and, and it gives you a really nice creative control. Again, that's just a quick look at the multi-exposure feature on this camera. Now, this camera, again, can be very simple. Uh, there's also some really nice features on this camera as well, including an auto-bracketing function. It's accessed through the same button that you would to get into the high-speed mode, so you push down. But here you can select things from auto-exposure bracketing up to one full stop, ISO bracketing, film simulation bracketing, as well as dynamic range bracketing. So if you take a look at auto-exposure bracketing, what it does, it takes three shots. One, you know, properly exposed, one overexposed, and one underexposed. And depending on the settings I select, if it's one stop, it's going to be one stop overexposed, one stop underexposed, and one stop, one, and one that's even exposure. So let's take a look at it. This is a one under, this is one over, and this is a proper exposure. This is a neat mode. Maybe you want to merge the images together through, you know, HDR photography. Or generally, it's used to kind of identify the scene to see, you know, what the best, um, you know, exposure for it to be is, so that you can just quickly take a snot and then determine if it should be an overexposed shot or underexposed, uh, and you can compensate for that later on. Um, there's also things like ISO bracketing as well as the film simulation bracketing. And the film simulation bracketing, if you go into the menu OK button, you can configure it to shoot uh, different uh, simulation modes. So let me confine that film simulation bracketing. I can set it up to shoot things like Velvia, maybe take the second shot in monochrome, which is black and white, and maybe the third shot should be uh, sepia or sepia. And I take the snapshot now, 
takes one shot, creates uh, three images from that one shot, from a black and white or a sepia to a black and white to a sort of a higher contrast Velvia setting. And that's nice to have, especially if you have kids and you don't want to do editing, you can take a quick shot, get one shot at least in black and white, one shot with the old fashioned, you know, sepia, sepia look. And of course, you've got a more saturated Velvia. It's fully customizable and it's a great feature to have. And of course, you've got dynamic range as well as ISO bracketing if you want to play with that. The focus mode on this camera is interesting. Now, the default, of course, is that it, it uses an autofocus. Depending on the modes, if you're on Scene Plus, C SR Plus Auto, it's going to use a continuous autofocus, and you have really no control for that. It's also going to use face detection in order to determine uh, the, the focusing on that. Now, if you wanted to manually focus with the camera or move the focus points to different uh, areas, you have to shoot out of the SR Plus Auto, maybe into the program or any of the other manual modes. I'm just going to leave it on the program auto mode, as you can see here. To change the autofocus points, uh, because it's set to the single center focus, right, wherever you aim the, the button halfway down, it's going to focus. As you can see, uh, you push upwards, you can move the, using the directional pad, 49 different focus points. And it makes, it's helpful when you want to have the subject on one side and still have proper exposure on the whole scene. And, uh, and that's how you can move the focus points. You can use the command dial here to shrink it, to make it very small, or enlarge it to make it very big. And this is going to tell the camera how to kind of focus on. And the wider you have the focusing, the more it's going to look at scenes where it's high contrast. Sometimes, though, if you want pinpoint, pinpoint focus accuracy, you want to have it at the smallest. But then by doing that, it sometimes will make it harder for the camera to focus because it's, it's more narrowed down to where you want the focus points to be. So you want to figure out uh, where you want the focus size to be at. And again, you can enlarge it or size it and you want to put it back to the default size, push inwards on the button itself and it shrinks it back. Now, the autofocus points can be moved around as well. Uh, like I said, to 49 different points. And if you want it back to the, to the center again, I believe you push the display back button and it brings it back to the center. If you want to move it to a focus point like that, you can tap the shutter button to get out of that right away. Take your snapshot, you know it's focused there, put it back and then put it back to the center by pushing the display back button and it resets that uh, in the middle. So that's just the focusing. Uh, in order to change it to manual focus, you push the Q button and then you can have access through the Q menu to change it from the area focus to a continuous autofocus to uh, autofocus with tracking, so it allows you to track a subject. So again, you push left, it locks the tracking, and as you can see, that green square is actually following the subject, or the subject itself is moving, and the green square is, uh, is uh, moving along with that as well, as you can see there. And that's gonna speed up the focusing, okay? Uh, let's turn off the tracking. Uh, go back to the Q menu and select Manual Focus. And the manual focus feature is nice in the sense that uh, you, know, you can use this to adjust focus. If you have legacy lenses and you're using an adapter like an M-mount adapter or even some of the third-party adapters for things like Nikon or, or Canon mounts, um, this camera does incorporate that uh, um, focus peaking feature. You push inwards to zoom in and you can push, as you can see there, as the, as the face glows in, in a bright highlighted that's so the focusing met method there, you can see it's in focus right about there. You can take a snapshot and you know that that picture is going to be in focus. So the focusing does help you with focus peaking. Alternatively, if you can go to the menu on the camera and go down to focus modes. You can change the focus modes from there. In addition to that, you can also in in change the uh, manual focus. So if you don't like the peaking, you can have the standard focusing method, which doesn't show you any highlights at all from that. Last focusing mode I want to show you is the uh, multi-focusing area. This is for someone who wants just to the camera to decide where the focusing point is going to be. It's going to find the, 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 the highest contrast and it's going to try to find it uh, most of the time. As you can see, it's picking that subject most of the time. And this might be an easy mode for when you want to pass it to somebody to take a picture of you. You're, you're standing side by side. You don't want them to focus dead center. Okay, so great, Billy. Thank you very much. That's a lot of great features. But, you know, again, I want to remind you that this camera is the exact same image quality as our XE1, X Pro 1 professional style cameras. However, we have designed this camera more with the photographer in mind that's more into, you know, family photography, casual travel, shooting. Casual shooting. 
who wants all the speed and quality of those cameras that really doesn't want to lug something around That's or right. that, quite frankly, wants to spend that much money. So the XF1 is the perfect alternative for that customer. Uh, we've got lots of other videos, so if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you come back and, and check out our other products. Follow Billy on Twitter. And until next video, I'm Greg. And I'm Billy. And we're the Fuji Guys.